Hello and welcome to episode 150 of Ready to Mosh. I'm Gem G and with me as always, the bin to my joust, Mr Kev P. I'm the bin. You are. Charming. Human bin. Well, yeah, probably about right. <laughs> Size or skip. <laughs> I'll call you Biffa. Yeah. So if you hadn't realised already, it's part one of our Bloodstock preview. Yeah, there's lots to talk about. We've got all of the stuff that we've got information on at the moment in this episode. We've got all of the bands that are playing Thursday and Friday. Apart from New Blood, because Metal to the Masses hasn't quite finished, so not all of the day splits for the New Blood stage have been done yet. So we're going to cover that separately in a future episode. And just to say at this point, there's going to be, because we're recording this on whatever day today is, I don't even know, the 9th of July. And there is a Facebook Live on the 11th after we've recorded this with Adam and Vicky. So new things may come to light after that, but we will cover them in uh, part two episode. But we need to get this done now because we're off to Mangota Festival at the weekend, which will have been and gone by the time this is out. So (laughs) (laughs) this is the timelines we're working to. It's busy. So we're just going to do some general stuff about Bloodstock to start with, I think. just. Standard Makes bits and bobs in it. So as we speak, tickets are still available because that's an important part of going to a festival. You need a ticket. I'm amazed tickets are still available, to be honest, because the lineup this year is incredible. I think the lineup is better than downloads this year. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I won't argue with that. I thought Saturday day tickets might have sold out, at least. But as far as we know, in terms of general tickets, standard weekend are still available. So you kind of classic Thursday through to Monday camping. There's also the early entry add-on that you can get for £21 as well. But all VIP and your pre-pitch and your camper van have sold out because they pretty much sell out straight away, don't they? Yeah, they're instantly sold out. As soon as they go on, everybody is straight on them. It's very much like the RIP at download, isn't it? Yeah, but obviously more limited. But yeah, a lot, a lot more limited. And camper vans sell out wherever you go, don't they? Yeah. Make how how are that many people got camper vans? It blows my mind. Well, they're supposed to take up more room, don't they? Do yeah. you know what I mean? So there's less space for them and we just, yeah, we, we want one one day so we're just bitter at anyone who's got a camper van because <laughs> we want to be comfy. But yeah, tickets are still on the Bloodstock website um, for the general weekend. Day tickets for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And car park tickets. What I did notice when I was looking at car park tickets, you know how download have the same price of car park ticket regardless of how many, how many days you're doing for. Yeah. Bloodstock actually do, you know, the more proper thing that if you're just going for a date, you do pay less. Obviously, it works out better to get a weekend ticket if you're going for a weekend, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It, yeah. But it's a reduced price if you are just going for one day. Mm. I think if you were going for two days, you're probably better off getting the weekend one, but at least there is a bit of, what do you call Flexibility. it? Flexibility. Yeah. There's like a ratio. Yeah. Kind of thing going on. Just Pro-rated to the day. pro rated yeah, I just thought it was interesting because I've never really looked at that bit before. No, because every time we've done Bloodstock, it's either been in Circumslayer or we've done Press. Yeah, so you don't need a separate... You don't need separate car park ticket, yeah. do you? The merch is available for click and collect as well. So there's the lineup t-shirts, the hoodies, the battle jackets, the cups, loads of stuff. And there's some really cool t-shirts this year as always the front designs of bloodstock t-shirts are just yeah do you know what i think it was last year's with the gold design mm. that i've got and you've got as well actually we got you've got yours one, on didn't we? i have oh i'm wearing my bloodstock t-shirt that's apt isn't it i didn't even do it on purpose <laughs> yeah i think that was an amazing kind of color scheme and logo that they've done for that and the year before i've got a burgundy one you had the actual t-shirts burgundy yeah and it's, they've done kind of like different designs and different colours and they've always looked really nice. Yeah, my 2022 one I'm not as keen on because it's plainer, but that, I think that was the only one available when we got... There was very early to supplies, yeah. I remember there being one with the red design on that I really liked. And I do love the one that I got from last year that I am currently wearing, but I know someone who's got one with like a really nice blue design on and that mm. looks really nice. And I've looked at this year's and there's probably two or three that I like, yes, as well as top, the hoodie. Top tip, if you're... Going to Bloodstock, pre-order your merch, because then you know you're going to get the colour and shape, the size that you want, instead of just risking it. Yeah, because last year we got ours Thursday night, didn't we? We just went to the merch store, and I think the year before we went later. 
in the weekend. Yeah, I feel like it was the Sunday morning. It might have been. And pretty almost everything sold out. Yeah. So having said that, though, they are really good at restocking the website after you and you can kind of get one later on if you don't get one. Mm. So, yeah, you can always kind of spread it out and get some later in the year if, if it's still available. If it, that's it, if There's no guarantees. Available. So if you definitely want something you spot, then, yeah, click and collect will be the way forward for that. And I believe it's just collected from the main kind of merch stand in the main arena. Yeah. The map has also been released, so I don't think much has changed, really, from what I've seen. I've not noticed any major changes. It's all a very similar layout. Yeah, I've not kind of had a good zoom in and proper nose around, but kind of at first glance, I think it looks pretty... Looks the usual self. The usual, yeah, but it's out there, so feel free to go and have a look yourself, see where things are. Your favourite thing next? My favourite thing at a festival. It's up there for you as well, surely. Yeah, below the bands and the alcohol. and <laughs> I'd put bands above this, but I prefer food to alcohol, I think. Mm. If I, had I think to they choose. come together for well, me. Anyway, yes, it's the festival food. What we love about Bloodstock is they're always giving information out way in advance as much as possible. And the food was originally released, I think, around February time. There was a slight tweak at the end of June. Mm-hmm. We spotted, interestingly, a certain um, infamous food stall at another festival is no longer on the lineup for the food, shall we say. But there's still plenty of choice on there. And I think a lot of it is probably similar to what's been there before. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's I think is the same places. But just looking at that list, I'll, we've not long since eaten, but I'm getting hungry looking at it. Yeah, I've picked out some I want to go for, which include, but are not limited to, Big Mouth Gyoza, because I had that at download, and those mushroom dumplings, and the yeah, chips that went with them, they excited. were nice. I saw them at Bloodstock last year, and I didn't go for them, and I don't know why. I just felt like they might not be very filling. Mm. But it, it's yeah. all, The thing for me is it's mm. all weather-related. It depends on what the weather's doing. That is true, because last year we had pies and Yorkshire puddings, didn't we, because the weather wasn't boiling hot. It was a mm. bit overcast. Yeah, and the year before, we didn't eat. I don't think we had anything like that. It was red hot. I did have a Yorkshire pudding on principle on the Sunday, but I really struggled to get through it. <laughs> I was being very British about it, you know, like when you get people who have a, a Sunday roast on holiday in Spain. Yeah. Other things I spotted, I want to try or well, to try, I've already tried it. I tried it at Bloodstock last year. That is bunny chow. Yeah, do you know what? I'd try that this year, I think. Mm. I think I'd probably just give it a go. I was always a bit scared because I thought I thought they only did a spicy one and then I realised that they do a mild chilli or a spicy one. So I went for the mild one and, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, I probably would need a spicy one, I think. Yeah. So they like spicy chilli. And the salt and chilli chicken, because I love salt and chilli mm. food. Yeah, I can't remember if they did a veggie option. Is it showing on there? I'm just trying to look because they've got the symbols. Don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah, is it? Yeah, they What's do. Sim- oh, sorry, gluten-free. Sorry. Gluten-free and vegan. Yeah, I can see now the, the big symbols that are actually very clear, but I'm just looking in the wrong place. Yeah, I think everything seems to have a veggie option, if not vegan. So um, Apart from the Romeo and Rotisserie. Oh, yeah. Um, no, it does. Yeah, no, they've got veggie options. Never tried There's a vegetarian them. option mm. for everything. I've never tried Romeo and Rotisserie, but I've always heard good things about it being really good kind of value for money and really fills you up. I'm surprised you've not tried it, actually, chicken and roast potatoes. Yeah, I don't know. Why? Could be a Sunday dinner. Could be. And one thing I am very excited about, I am expecting huge queues, and that is Spudman. <laughs> yeah, oh, do you know what? I was thinking about that as well. And it's funny, because last year I was thinking, I could just eat a jacket potato, and I couldn't find one. And yeah, Spudman is there, and we follow him on TikTok, and we saw, well, I saw the queues that he had at Silverstone over the weekend, which were massive. Mm. So I'm saying I'm very excited to try it, a Spudman Spud. If you get near it. If I can get near it, because I love a jacket potato, but I don't know if I want to queue like an hour and miss a band for the sake of a jacket yeah. potato. But that is kind of my target, a cheese and bean and I think it onions. depends where he is. I know it's main arena. Yeah. Well, no, my oh. point is you could potentially still watch a band while you're yeah. queuing. Oh, that's true. Yeah, if it's near main stage. Okay. Yeah. Mm. It's probably going to be situated somewhere to account for the queue, not disturbing. The so rest it's probably going to get near the... So. Um, Roller coaster. Not roller, that, roller, well, coaster. roller coaster. <laughs> really you know, the dodgems and uh, the fairground, fairground end, where yeah. so there's a load of food stores down yeah. there. Isn't there. I think it'll be up that end. 
Yeah, then there's just kind of general other stuff that you tend to get, like you've got your mac and cheese stall, yes. the noodle stall, dirty and loaded fries are always Always welcome. Well. <laughs> Toasties and breakfast wraps. Don't know if, are they in the main arena or they tend to just be in kind of standard camp and I can't remember. I don't know because they've listed all the food, but I suppose there will be some, obviously there's going to be something in main camping, but I don't yeah. know if that's. Or it might be there as well as a main arena because yeah. the main arena opens when it opens quite early, doesn't it? Mm. So there might be a market for breakfast in there. I'm not sure. Obviously a Greek stall that always goes down well as well. So yeah, always excited to try some foods. I've not seen churros, but I have seen donuts. Yeah, I don't remember seeing churros at Bloodstock, actually. Unless it's one of your staple festival go-tos, isn't it? Well, it was, and then I didn't have any last year. Because I think they sold out where I wanted them from, or I don't think I fancy any last year. It tends to be a download Sunday thing, and I think it was so hot, I just didn't. Yeah. Um, by the time I'd watched Ghost on Sunday night, and then had that kind of traumatic journey from there down to the main stage the Eva Slipknot which was just chaotic I just mm. I just don't think I want that any <laughs> but I don't know it's always good as we mentioned in one of the roundups I think it was the fancy dress has been announced and it's horror characters dinosaurs and Lemmy slash motorhead over the weekend and it's not limited it's not one to a day it's all of those kind of over the weekend yeah, so outfits still to be decided for that one. <laughs> and as we have already mentioned as well, in one of our kind of new roundup episodes, Bin Jousting has an official championship. I believe it's going to be held in Midgard with safety marshals and all of that kind of stuff to make it safe or safer. But I don't know if any times or anything have been released yet. I've not that. seen anything about it. I think it's going to depend on the uptake of people, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, will it be more popular because it's legal or will it be less i don't know we'll have to wait and see and if you're lucky enough to be in serpent's lair this year the entertainment opening thursday night is dj rocklopes yeah he's our local metal dj and yeah he'll be playing at the opening party and as usual there's a tribute band playing every night in the serpent's lair bar area as well and for thursday that is motley crude obviously a motley crude tribute band <laughs> There's also a first performance on Friday by the Pop-Up Puppet Cinema, with their version of Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm kind of intrigued by that. I'm intrigued, but I'm also a bit creeped out by puppets. In, <laughs> in a, yeah, it's just, I just remember there always been a puppet show at primary school that used to like tour the area, and it was just a boring, and I think that just scarred me for life with real life puppetry. Was it like Zakimbo from uh, Bigger Gentleman? <laughs> no, just because I grew up in Derbyshire. Doesn't mean it was Royston and Basie. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I don't know how I feel about that one. And then it's Rob Zombie uh, doing the Rob Zombie tribute as well on Friday. Yeah, I've heard good things about them as a tribute band. So that should be good. Quite a few different things announced for Saturday, including the legend that is Crusher doing another edition of Crusher Nori Live with some of his tales. From Ozzy, no doubt. We yeah. did a bit of that last year, didn't we? Which Russia is incredible. He's got the best stories. And then there is Caleb, the drummer. I can't remember how old they are, but I know they're only very young, but a very good drummer for their age. And they were there last year as well. Another performance from the Pop-Up Puppet Cinema. This time it's Pack to the Future, which that's one for you, isn't it? 100%, yeah. Well, that and Nightmare on Elm Street, to be honest. Well, yeah, but you're out of the two, you're more of the Back to the Future than me, whereas we both yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. Hmm. And then finishing off Saturday night is a tribute to Rage Against the Machine and Audio Slave in the form of Audio Rage, which I think is quite a clever mashup, actually. Yeah, really good. There is also going to be on Sunday the inaugural edition of Nevermind the Bloodstocks, which is the VIP pub quiz. I'm quite interested in that, depending on what time it's on. Yeah. It, it, it's hard with that because I know so many different things about so much shit. But if it's, you know, like when we, you know, like if you watch a quiz and they quote your song lyrics, for instance, I really struggle because I can't, I know the song, but I can't yeah. think, I can't get it into the flow into my head. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think it's kind of a general stuff around Bloodstock, obviously the bands that have yeah. been there and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that sounds fun. And then closing out. The tributes are the Ramstein tribute band Mordestein. Yeah, again, I've heard good things about them. And then there's loads of other stuff going on as well in Serpent's Lair, so just keep an eye out for what's happening there. 
Yeah, I think a lot's been announced, but there's still a few, few more bits to to be put out there. And obviously, they've got kind of various DJs and stuff going on across the weekend between bands and playing you some tunes to have a bop to while you have some links. Right, we're going to move on and talk about some bands now. Yeah, what are the chances? Wow, there's a thing indeed. So we're going to start with Thursday, and there are going to be five bands playing on the Sophie stage on Thursday night. We've not actually had any times confirmed yet as we speak. I suspect that might be coming very, very soon. I think it probably will be soonish. Probably, yeah. I reckon probably after the Facebook Live, you know. I think it's normally about a week before, though, isn't it, when times get confirmed? Because things can still I suppose, yeah, things can still change. change. But it tends to be late afternoon when things kick off, music-wise, on the Thursday. And the band opening up the Sophie stage and the festival as a whole is Acid Age. Yeah, they don't have a long while, of these. Yeah, I get one of those, I say this a lot, but it's one of those whose name I've heard, but I've never seen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And they celebrate their 10th year by doing a tour with Evile. They did a two-hour anniversary show, and they were metal to the masses to give them a spot at Bloodstock 23. Yeah, so they've moved up from New Blood to the Sophie stage. So, yeah, could be one of those bands checking off all three at some point. Mm. Or, well, all three of the main stages, not including the EMB stage. I actually worked out who has done that as well. Yeah, that came about when we were chatting to see the Nagira, didn't it? Yeah. They are one of the minority that they have done that. They are one of the few that have done it, yeah. yeah. Then after Acid Age is Tail Gunner, and Tail Gunner are incredible. Absolutely love their sound, and they've played all kinds of places, Call of the Wild, Wildfire Festival. They've played uh, support slots with KK Downing to open up KK's, KK's Priest show. Yeah, I feel like we've kind of seen them grow massively alongside, not that we've grown massively, but they were kind of born, as it were, in around the start of 2022, weren't they? Yeah. Obviously, we launched the podcast May 2022, and they were kind of a band that we picked up on really early Very, on, yeah, and yeah. I think we recommended them as one of our Register Mosh recommendations towards the end of 2022. Yeah. And they've just exploded, haven't they? Yeah, and they've got they've had some amazing support slots. They've toured here, there, and everywhere. And for some unbeknownst reason, we haven't yet seen them. Yeah, but they're playing that. Bloodstock, and they're also playing at Stone Dead this year. So we will see them. Yeah, and yeah, very much looking forward to them. And then next up on Thursday is another band that we are both looking forward to. Former guests of the show, and we've seen them live before a couple of times, and that is South of Salem. Yeah, these are unbelievable live. We saw them support Wednesday 13. We saw them at Stone Dead. We're seeing them again supporting Wednesday 13 yeah. later this year. So yeah, they're, they're quickly moving up the uh, amount of times that we've watched a band. Yeah, definitely getting up there. But yeah, if you've not seen them live before, definitely check them out. They are they are awesome. They put on a really good show. They've got some really cool theatrics going on. We won't say too much to spoil it, but yeah. If you see one band on Thursday, definitely make it them. Yeah. Latest album, Death of the Party as well, is unbelievable. Really, really good, fun album. Then next up, a band that we've seen live as well, which is Hellripper. Yeah, we saw them playing at the Hairy Dog in October last year. Yeah. Incredible noise. Just so, it was just so loud, wasn't it? Yeah. And just absolutely chaotic pit going on, I think. I kind of started down one side trying to film it and yeah. ended up just going Moving back. backwards because yeah. it was chaos. Yeah. Keep an eye out for Hell Ripper. I'm to be honest, I'm I'm surprised Hell Ripper's above South of Salem based on South of Salem's tours of late. You say that the Hell Ripper have been around a long time, haven't That's they? True, and really yeah. kind of built themselves up. If you're not familiar with Hell Ripper, it's basically kind of a one man black metal band. Yeah. Stroke thrash band. And I've been around for about 10 years at least. Yeah, it is. they do have a touring band, so it's not just one man on stage doing the live shows, but great live, lots of fun, yeah, like I said, lots of chaos. And then headlining the safe stage on Thursday night is a band I'm not that familiar with, but I have been listening to lately and I've been very much enjoying them, and that is Evergrey. Mm. Another one to add to my Evergreen list of Swedish bands I love. <laughs> but yeah, they're kind of... Progressive, melodic, metal. And they're actually on their 12th album, so I don't know I how just, I've not yeah. found them before. I was just going to say that. They have been together a long time and put out a lot of material. So 
that'll be, uh, I think that'll be really busy forever, bro. Yeah, definitely. By the time everyone's kind of, or most people are in and settled for the Thursday, I think there'll be a good crowd in for that one. Right then, on to Friday. And we're not going to go through every single band of every single day and every single stage because there are so many to watch. So we're just going to pick out a handful from each stage and each day, but with the focus in this episode as well being Friday. Yeah, so we're going to start with the AMP stage. We'll just mention every band on that one because there's only going to be five anyway. Mm Mm-hmm. So if you're not familiar with Bloodstock, the EMP stage is formerly known as the Jaeger stage. And I feel like we'll always call it the Jaeger stage because it just has a ring to it. And yeah, Yeah. but this is the smallest stage and it's kind of kind of to the side of the main stage. And you tend to get bands on there in between your main stage bands from later on in the day. Yeah. And opening up the, I nearly said Jaeger then, (laughs) the EMP stage is Lost Brethren. So these are kind of a technical death metal band. They actually remind me quite a bit of Voidwalker, yeah. who we saw at Bloodstock last year when I was listening to them. Quite a similar sound to them, but these have got kind of a sci-fi inspiration behind them, apparently. Probably why I like them. I yeah. Sci-fi nerd. Then. Yeah. That's me. And on after Lost Brethren are Lethal Evil, who are kind of like a groove thrash band. Um, lots of kind of death metal in there as well. Yeah, and they are relatively new in terms of being a band, aren't they? I think they've yeah. been around a couple of years. Yeah, and to get a spot at Bloodstock already shows they're doing the right thing. Yeah. Next up is Crowley, which I think is an excellent name for a band. Yeah. They're kind of a pagan-inspired, occult rock, kind of classic metal band, but it's quite a few kind of 70s vibes in there from what I was listening to earlier. Yeah, and they've, again had a lot of kind of feature across various kind of outlets, such as Planet Rock, BBC Introducing. Yeah, I'm quite liking them, so hopefully we'll get to catch a bit of them from there on. Yeah, and somebody else I'd like to catch is King Kraken, who we're up next. Yeah, I, another one where I love the name of the band, so it <laughs> appeals to me, and then obviously it's a bonus when you have a band name that sounds good and you actually like them, if you know what yeah. I mean. Because sometimes that doesn't happen and you're like, I want to like you because of your name, but I don't. I could name several bands that that's with me. But we're not. We won't but I'm not going to mention it there. That's yeah. another episode. <laughs> yeah, and they've, I mean, they just get better and better every single release that they do. Play some huge shows, and I don't think it's going to be long before they're smashing up kind of like main stage and stuff. Yeah, I've been quite enjoying these for a while, to be honest. And yeah. Just talking about names of things as well. Any band with a single called Haddonfield 78 is going to always go well with me. Same, yeah. And then headlining the EMP stage on Friday night is MAB or MAB. Not quite sure the correct pronunciation of that one. So yeah, this is a band that I've been around for a long time. And I don't recall coming across them before, but I was doing a bit of reading earlier about them. And they apparently opened up for Him and Cathedral back in 2004. And I had a look at that because I actually went to the Him tour in 2004 with Cathedral opening to see if I've actually seen them. But I think they only did the London date, so I haven't no, seen them before. But that would be really weird if like, I saw them 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they also did a tour with Breed 77. Well, it's like different things colliding, isn't it? Yeah, it's like everything, isn't it? Just all merging. So in theory, we should have seen these. Yeah, exactly. And maybe we will. Maybe we will, yeah. Yeah, we we will see. Right, moving on then. So as we said at the start, we're not going to go through the new blood stage at this point in time because we're just waiting for the day splits for those to be finalised and we will talk through them on another episode. So we're going on to the Sophie stage next and we're just going to kind of pick out a few of the bands each that we are particularly looking forward to because there's loads on there and to be honest, most of them. I would like to give a watch to you, but that's never going to be possible. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. Is pretty much every single band I think on Friday I want to watch. Yeah, across all stages. <laughs> yeah, and not yeah, not just one stage, all stages. So yeah, we're just going to say who in particular we are particularly looking forward to. So starting with Burner, who by the time this goes out, we will hopefully have seen at Mangata. Mm. And if that. Well, yeah, we'll know more what they sound like live because we haven't seen them yet. Yeah, as this goes out, we will have done. It's kind of odd talking about a band that we're going to see before we actually see them here. Yeah, obviously we talked about them in this week's episode in Amangata Premier. So 
if you haven't listened to that, maybe go and listen to that and see what we've got to say about burnout. <laughs> or listen to our manga after review to see if we saw them. But anyway, waffling on there. They're kind of a mix of death metal, hardcore... Black metal. Black metal, just general heaviness. But yeah, they sound really good. I'm really excited to see them at some point this year live, I think we can say. And then following them is Death Collector, who I am very excited to see. They are old school death metal band founded by Bolt Thrower's drummer a few years ago. And yeah, I'm just very much looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, they even got off a multi-album deal, didn't they? Which is not something that doesn't come about all the time. It's a, you know what I mean? For yeah. a band to be offered that shows you kind of what they're capable of. Yeah, definitely just on the basis of basically kind of a demo EP, wasn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, very excited to see them. And obviously it means you get to see an original member of Bolt Thrower, which I've never done before. Mm. I'm looking forward to Wolf. They're really kind of like old school, they're on the ninth. They've done at least nine albums now. Yeah. And yeah, it's just kind of classic, classic sort of like Maiden sort of vibe. Yeah, I got quite a few Judas Priest vibes from them. Bit of Merciful Fate up yeah. there, I think. And it's it's kind of a real throwback and it's I wasn't kind of expecting it. No, when I saw the name Wolf, I was I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't Kind of a shrieking vocal and an old school metal sound. sound. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, their stuff is amazing and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm also actually looking forward to Halifron, who I think might be on Before Wolf, just looking at the poster. Yeah. A band that completely new to me up until listening to all the bands at Bloodstock. But yeah, I thought they were really interesting, really cool kind of black symphonic melodic kind of sound to them mm -hmm. and from the netherlands as well i'm also looking forward to watching darkest era so they've been around since 2006 and they've got such a different mix of styles so there's some tracks that are kind of a little bit like battery or tracks that have i don't know kind of got quite a haunting sort of big soundscape to them mm -hmm. and then there's other stuff that's completely different yeah, it's a bizarre mix when I was listening to them a bit earlier. The first one I listened to that came up when I looked them up sounded a bit like a sea shanty. And then another one came on and that was just a completely different level of sound. I was like, w what's going on here? I know exactly the song you were talking about. I can't remember the name of the title. And I got exactly the same vibe from that track. But then there's another one on the same album that, that is mm. so far removed from that. I was quite confused listening to them to start with because I just didn't quite know what was going on. So be interesting to see what kind of show they do or what kind of set sound they do. They put I suppose, together. Yeah. yeah, could be anything. Then after I do feel like we're kind of like doing about four in a row here. Yeah, <laughs> we said we said we weren't going to do this. So apologies to the bands that we've missed out. We we all we have just kind of picked these up um, random that we are wanting to talk about. But next up is Eternal Champion. And if you're kind of a fan of Bathory, Warlord, Man of War, this is the band for you. I think these are going to be insane in that tent. And again, this is another band that I think has been around for a good 10, 12 years now. And to see them getting kind of like really high of the second stage is uh, great to see. And yeah, they're going to be good live. I just want to mention Vintage Caravan who I still can't decide if I really like them or not. They're just such a weird, quirky mix of stuff. Like one minute they sound like Clutch and they've got a lot of kind of those stonery bass lines going on, but then they've got this really quirky, insane vocal over the top and it's just such a weird mix of stuff. And I know that you weren't particularly a fan when I mentioned it because I listened to one track and I thought you'd like it, but you didn't. Yeah. Yeah, it just didn't do it for me. I just feel like they're a band that I'd be intrigued to see live hmm. and see how they come across live. Well, we've said before, though, there are so many bands that I've seen live that have completely changed my opinion because their live show is just a completely different sound and much more to my liking. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, just for something a bit different, I think that might be good to check out if I can. And then headlining Safe Stage on Friday is Igor. Oh, I just feel the need to say like that. Harking back to my childhood watching Count Ducula. <laughs> Once again, showing our age. Or maybe you pronounce it like that because, you know, there are three oars on it. Oars. Three oars. Three oars. <laughs> Get off me, land. <laughs> so, yeah, Igor. Igor? Anyway, I am very intrigued by this. It's 
yeah, I've listened to quite a bit of them over the last few years, really, the band that just pop up now and again on, you know, kind of random playlists and stuff. Mm. And it is like a quirky, again, quirky mix, a random mix of, you know, black metal, dance, industrial, industrial, all sorts just mixed in there. So I think, yeah, it'll be really cool to see, especially with it, obviously, being in the tent, being dark, I think there'll be a really good atmosphere in there for it and very just intrigued to see what it comes across like live. I know they're on a bit of a, a festival run at the moment. I think that tent's going to be heaving for yeah. things. It's just going to be a, a mass of people. It's going to be crazy. And yeah, a band that I'm surprised I've not seen before. And like I said, they've been around for a while and I say they pop up and I listen to them sporadically. Yeah. So yeah, I think it'd be really good to see. Obviously, headlining the sofa stay, stage, it does get quite late at night. So but it'll be it'll be amazing in the tent because of the atmosphere they can generate and the darkness in there. Exactly, yeah. I think it'll be, I imagine, very similar vibes to when we saw Combi Christ. Yeah. Who we will talk about when we get on to the day that Combi Christ are playing, but I imagine it's that kind of vibe. Watch, so I think, yeah. I, I, think, was, I was thinking a little bit like King 810 show that we saw in the Sophie stage last year, I think it was. It was last year, yeah. On Thursday. yeah. And I think it's an amazing choice as a kind of headliner for that stage. Oh, well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, good one to see the night out, I would think. Right, moving on to the Ronnie James Dio stage, or the main stage, if you will. Again, we're just going to pick out a few that we are particularly looking forward to. Because to be honest, I could probably just sit and watch this whole main stage for the day. I'd be quite yeah. happily just camped up there. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm the same for the Sophie stage, to be well, honest. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Bloodstock needs to be about two weeks long and just have one stage a day yeah. <laughs> and you just sit and watch them all. And Or a rotating stage, like Bullseye. Yeah. <laughs> so you could set a band up while another band's playing. A bit like that, yeah, that side-by-side situation that, where did, oh, like Sonisphere was a little Sonisphere, bit. Sonisphere, yeah. Yeah, that kind of set up. Anyway, so I'm going to start with Nervosa, another kind of recent find for me, but I'm really liking what I've heard of them so far. They're a female Brazilian thrash band. Again, these have been around a few years now, but I haven't had say, I've not really come across them at all before, finding them on the Bloodstock poster. But yeah, I think they'll be really good live. Lots of energy, lots of fast guitars, some awesome vocals. So yeah. I was just going to say... What I do love about Bloodstock is there's not many festivals we go to now where we haven't come across the bands that are playing or seen them already. Yeah, that's true. And at Bloodstock, it seems they just seem to pull out this great selection of bands that you just go, don't know who these are. Yeah. I think as well what I love about Bloodstock is that there are a lot of bands, like you say, that we've not come across before but that we really like. And we did find... With a lot of bands, for example, at Download this year, there were a lot of bands we'd not come across, but they weren't really our thing. Yeah. Which in some ways is good because it makes it easier to pick who you want to see. But yeah, it the gets problem, rid of clashes. <laughs> the problem you have with this lineup at Bloodstock is that you want to watch everyone. But that's a good problem to have. Yeah, that is true. Next up, a band that we are desperate to see and keep missing all the time. And I don't know how we do it. It's one of those bands. One of those. And that's Greenlong. Yeah, I've wanted to see them for a while. Really, really enjoyed their latest album. And interestingly, they did a tour, a UK tour, not that long ago, and their support was Lowen, former guest of the show. Yeah. So to see them two together would have been amazing, but there just wasn't a date near us that we could get to. Yeah, that would have been a really good gig to go to. Big fans of Lowen, and we do like Greenlong, so hopefully we can get them ticked off. Yeah, I would like to think so. Finally. And then kind of carrying on with some kind of doomy vibes, as it were. Mm-hmm. Another band that I've been around a very long time, and that is Grand Magus, one of my list of Swedish bands I like. <laughs> a huge, on the huge list of Swedish bands you well, like. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be bringing some big riffs onto that stage as well. Over the years, they've done some tours with Electric Wizard, Cathedral, for example. So that kind of gives you the idea of the vibes that they bring and yeah, I'm hoping it's going to be like a really dry, sunny Friday and you can just kind of sit and chill and watch these. Do you know what I mean? That kind of. <laughs> yeah, atmosphere. I know what you mean. I, yeah. I think it's going to be a busy old stage. Moving on then, and I'm kind of aware that we are going through a lot of these in order, but these are kind of like some of the highlights, like we said. But Rotting Christ, another band that 
still haven't got to watch yet. They've been around for so long that it's almost a crime that we've not seen them. I know. We did review their latest album. Was it in the May roundup? Was it in the April roundup? I can't remember off the top of my head. But fairly recently, we absolutely loved their latest album. We said at the time, this is going to be epic to watch live. Not quite sure how it'll work in the daylight, but you get that with a lot of bands, as we we often say, don't we? Yeah. But definitely will be. Just the atmospherics that they've got in their music as well, bringing it onto that big stage will be great. Yeah. And I mean, the amount of years they've been around, the amount of albums they've put out, and it's not it's not waned, has it? It's just it's mm. still as strong as it ever was. Yeah, which I think we said when we did the review, didn't we? Mm. They're a band that just keeps evolving even though they're so evolved already yeah yeah they will be absolutely great next up a band that we have seen both together and apart yeah and that is Hatebreed. we both saw them at download in 2004 but we didn't even know each other we didn't know we could have been stood next to each other could have been and that i remember that tent being just insanity yeah i was on the edge of it oh i was in the middle of it of course you were and then we saw them at Download 2018 together on the yeah. main stage. And um, yeah, I love Haybreed. Um, we would have seen them in, was it 22 they were supposed to play? At Bloodstock, yeah. And then they had to pull out. So. Yeah, which I was gutted about. Yeah. But yeah, great to see them back on the lineup for this year. Yeah. Um, they've been around such a long time and they're just an iconic band, aren't they? I say, what can you say about them that people probably don't know already, really? I don't know. I genuinely don't because, well, I suppose for younger listeners that maybe don't know hate breed are just go and watch them you will not regret it yeah. if you've never seen them just go and watch them they are so good live yeah absolutely and I, yeah i just feel like even youngsters will know who they are because they are one of those kind of iconic metal bands yeah the unbelievable live so much noise so much energy and they really get a crowd going even after all these years yeah and and the fact that they've been invited back to bloodstock after having to pull out shows you kind of the thoughts of Bloodstock that they know that they're going to put on a great show. Oh, definitely, yeah. Then finally, last band we're going to pick out on Friday is the headliner, Opeth, a band we've seen three times already. This will be number four. It will, won't it? Wow. Yeah, first saw them back in 2012. Yeah, what's well, funny about Opeth for me, I definitely appreciate them a lot more now than I used to. I you think, have a thing about long songs, don't you? I do, and I think that used to put me off listening to them, so I never really listened to them. And then we first saw them at Download 2012, and that was our first download together, and we kind of stuck was, to yeah. each other like glue, whereas now we're off about, we are deceived, wasn't we? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, you, you didn't make me watch them, but you wanted to watch I them. I really though. wanted to watch them. I accompanied you, and that kind of was a turning point, seeing them live. I was just kind of entranced by them, and I've loved them a lot more since, and obviously... Another of Sweden's finest on my list. Yeah, I'd I'd been wanting to see them for years. And um, when we went together in 2012 and I saw they were on the line, I was like, I really need to see them. And I know you don't like long tracks usually, but it's just so captivating. It just really draws you in and you just become fixated on it. Yeah. Like, I can't think who they remind me of live, but in a similar way to Tool, I think. As in, I wasn't a big fan of them, but live, they just draw you in, mm. captivate you. And But I listen to Opeth a lot more than I ever used to, not live as well. Yeah, I could listen to them all day. I think they are so talented. You know, been around, God, it must be 30-something years now. I think it must be. And everything, kind of, I suppose as you'd expect, is just absolutely perfectly timed and another band that's not lost anything over the years it's all like you could from seeing them in 2012 to seeing them last in 2019 over that period that's seven years but even going back to the stuff they were doing when they first started in the 90s it still sounds fresh it still sounds like the right at the top of the game every single time they play and yeah i'm very very excited about this as you can tell and yeah, it's actually a UK exclusive fan picked set. And I did see the post out, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, where people could put their nominations forward. So it could be any mix of tracks that they're going to be playing, mm. which I think you have to have a certain level of back catalogue to start with to be able to do yeah, that. Yeah, be able to do it. But at the same time, you could have tracks in there that you've not played for years brought up. I mean, I don't know how they're going to narrow it down. Is it popularity, number of votes? 
Or will they be just like one person picks a random song and they go, oh, yeah, actually, <laughs> we haven't done that for 20 years. Let's pop that in. So it'll be very interesting to see what set they get. Also, I think what is great, and this is just on the Thursday and the Friday alone, Igor, as we mentioned, is a UK exclusive. Rotten Christ is a UK exclusive. Festival exclusive, Festival at exclusive, least, yeah. Festival exclusive, yeah. Hate Breed are doing a 30th anniversary set. Hope of the UK exclusive fan pick set. And that's just over two days. Yeah, exactly. So I think that says a lot about Bloodstock Stanley, which obviously we know about anyway, but the fact that bands are willing to come over here and give them exclusivity. Yeah, it speaks volumes about the festival. And if you've not got tickets, make sure you get them because it is going to be insane. So that was the first part of our Bloodstock preview. We're going to share any kind of updates that we get or anything about the festival between now and then. And you can find us on Instagram, Threads and X at Ready to Mosh Cast. We're on Facebook, TikTok and YouTube at Ready to Mosh. There's also our Patreon as well, which is just £3 a month. And you get access to the bloopers that don't make it into the show. Early access to episodes wherever possible. And you get to find out what we've got planned before anybody else. Finally, you can also support the podcast for free by giving us a five-star rating and a nice little review on whichever platform you're listening to. And we'll be back soon with another episode. Make it Swedish, mate.